Good morning, Life Island. All over the world today, we greet you in the name of He who is altogether lovely. The Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory, both now and forevermore. Amen. Well, when I was young, we, even very young, you know, three, five years old, we would, our family would go to San Diego to Mission Beach and spend time in the summer. And uh, I have videos, uh, actually uh, movies, they had movies back then, that uh, of me as a little tiny child and the ocean in, in the background and the waves uh, breaking at that time. And so recently we were in San Diego again, and you know what? Those waves are still breaking on the seashore. Now God has a picture in that. It's not just that this is a beautiful scene, it's a spiritual picture about the rebellious heart of man. Proverbs 16, 18, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So we need to be careful. Arrogance will lead to a fall. Isaiah 57, 20, but the wicked, now this is about the ocean, the wicked are like the troubled sea. The sea might look calm on top, but there's uh, currents that are underneath, just like in every man and woman's life. Uh, the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest. There's no rest, saith my God, for the wicked. Waters are cast up, mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, for the wicked. And the wicked are simply those that refuse God's love in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Job 38, 8 through 11, God goes all the way back to creation and tells us that when he created uh, the oceans and the seashore, he had a spiritual meaning in mind. In verse 8, it says, Who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth? And said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further. And hence shalt thou, listen, hence shall thy proud waves be stayed. God says the ocean is a troubled sea like the wicked, and yet there's a rebellion going on within the hearts of men. Pride is a picture in those waves. They rise up against God, and God says, but listen, I've set a boundary. You can come this far, but no further, and they come crashing down. God says in Jeremiah 5.22, going back to creation again, he's placed the sand for a bound by the sea by a perpetual decree. It, it does not change. When I was a little boy, those waves crashed down against the, the seashore. They're still doing it today. They cannot pass by it, God said. And though the waves there have tossed themselves, yet they cannot prevail. The picture is the rebellion of man against God. Even in crucifying the Lord Jesus, there is no prevailing because he rose from the dead and he is the Savior for all men if we just trust him today. It says, though the waves roar, yet they cannot pass by. That boundary God has placed. And then he says in verse 23 regarding Israel, but this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. What happens when a wave, no matter how big it is, after it crashes down and comes to the seashore? It's just a, a little bit of water, and a little child can stand in it, as perhaps you did and I did years ago. And then in Jude 13, God says, raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame. Raging. There's a, there's a war within the hearts of men, a raging hatred of God, continually rising up, just like those waves do, year after year after year after year, decade after decade decades, century after century, rising up against God. All the seashores of the world are a witness, and every wave that rises up, that the rebellion is in man's heart, and God will bring it to nothing. Oh, my friend, look at the cross of Calvary, where they crucified the blessed master, and yet he rose again the third day. Oh, my friend, you need Christ today. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Repent of your sins in this moment. Trust Christ. Call upon the name of Jesus and you shall be saved. Humble yourself, my friend. Pride leads to destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. In Jesus' name, amen.